For thousands of years, the creatures of Maine have heard the Abenaki language spoken. They hear it today when we say Prasumscot, which means many rough places. Allagash Bark Stream, Sebago Big Still Water. Here's Lee Chisholm on a boy's love for Sebago Lake. You know, some of my earliest memories relate to Maine Sebago Lake. It's the state's deepest freshwater body and certainly among its clearest, the source of all of the city of Portland's drinking water. Geologists tell us that the bedrock rimming the lake was shaped by fires under the earth some 300 million years ago. And the basin that holds the water was sculpted by the retreating glacier of the last ice age 14,000 years ago. Wide as well as deep, surrounded by white pines and to the northwest, punctuated by the white mountains, Sebago is old and pure and beautiful. In the 1930s, my grandfather built a cabin on Raymond Cape. I got to visit it several times as a small child. It was tucked just back from the water next to a granite knoll, which I would climb and there lose myself among the blueberries and the mica. The shore in front of the cabin was pure granite, smoothed by waves and weather. A long, wide, shelf-like ledge of granite extended out into the lake, and there a boy too young to swim could dinosaur walk on his hands in water just deep enough to make his torso and his legs trail buoyantly behind him, but never so deep as to break or submer over or submerge his head. But on one side, the granite stopped a couple of feet above the water, and here my parents could dive, and I could stand on the edge and see rocks shimmering through seven or eight feet of crystal clear water directly below. Sometimes, sometimes I saw great fish. Sebago was, is still, full of the most wondrous fish, and none more so than that to which it gave its name, Salma Salar Sebago, the landlocked salmon. For beauty and power and grace, the Sebago salmon is a king among fish. Arching above the stone fireplace of my grandfather's cabin, the biggest salmon that he'd ever caught had come back from a taxidermist majestically mounted. And as a boy who had already begun to divine and love the mystery of water and all the life that moved unseen beneath its surface, I could not pass that fireplace without looking up in admiration and making some inward reverence, a psychic bow to the great fish and the waters that had borne it. Something of the feeling that lives in me still for Sebago Lake was captured by the Irish poet William Butler Yeats, writing in the Lake Isle of Innisfree, I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavements gray. I hear it in the deep heart's core. 